Hi again. This is part two of the pro tips for easy image. Please watch part one if you have not already done so. Now one of the most asked questions by dealers or collectors who have websites uh, selling stamps online is how to watermark their images either for showing their logo or trademark or to protect their images from unauthor unauthorized use. We've been doing this for over 25 years to protect our images from piracy by our competitors and other entities. We always keep original scans of our images and separate copies of the watermarked images we make. There are two primary methods of watermarking images in Easy Image. One is designed for watermarking images one at a time, and the other is for processing multiple images at once. At once. We do thousands at a time for use in Easy Stamp. Let's go over the one image at a time method first. There are two kinds of watermarks we can use, text watermarks and image watermarks. We will review both of them today. Let's do a watermark, uh, which is a uh, text watermark, which is the, the simplest. I'm going to first uh, make a copy of this image as we'll, we will be reusing it for this demonstration. Con uh, when you have this image highlighted, Control D on your keyboard will make a copy of it. To begin the process, we select the T for text icon right here. And then we move our cursor to where we would like to place our, our text uh, uh, watermark and left click. So I'm going to left click down here at the bottom. We can set metrics for the fonts like color, left, right, center, bold. Here's what I've used in the past. And I always anti-alias my uh, uh, text so that it's, it doesn't appear jagged when you place it on, on your image. We'll now click OK. And our text is now a floating text which you can move anywhere you like on the image. I usually like it down at the bottom. Now let's set the opacity so it's not so obtrusive. It's a personal choice, but 10 to 15 is appealing. Uh, at least that's what I use. Um, so the way you do that is you go up to the top here where it says opacity, and you can type in a number. And if you look down at the bottom here, it has gotten much lighter. And you can again move it wherever you like. Once it is to your liking, simply right click on it to set it, and it is now locked in place. Once you've uh, created the, the uh, watermark at the location and, and uh, way that you like it, you can obviously save it and, and uh, do what you need to do with it and uh, upload it to your website or whatever you're going to do with it. Now, this can be automated so it can be used on thousands of images at once. I'll demonstrate this later uh, in this video. Now let's do an image overlay for this single image. First, I will undo the text watermark that we just did using Control Z. Now I'll show you how to do an image watermark. To place an image watermark, first we open the image we want to overlay. And here's one that I regularly use. So let's uh, select all using Control A and then Control C to copy it to the clipboard. And then we'll use Control V to paste it onto the uh, main image. And then we can set the opacity to our liking. So I've pasted it into the clipboard. And then I do a Control V and I'll do my image. And there it is. I'll now change the opacity to something lower. I'll move it down here so you can see it. Now, <clears throat> now this is okay, but I do not like the black fill around the edges of the image. So I'll show you how to uh, fix this. We'll control Z uh, to get rid of the current watermark and begin again. So the first thing we have to do is make what is called a floater in, in this way. So we'll select the ellipse icon uh, from the toolbar.
and then we'll select the area that we want to create a floater from. So I'm going to go to the very top left hand corner and carefully place my cursor which sometimes is difficult. So I've got my circle around the image. I let go and then we go to the floater menu and click sec uh, make from selection or control F. What this has done is it's made a, a, a separate floater image of just the area that we selected and it's available to us to, uh, to process in, in a way I'll show you now. So we simply drag it over to our uh, image and let go and then we can put it wherever we like. I'm going to change the opacity. So as you can see the lower I go the lighter it gets and then I can move it wherever I want other top left right hand corner. I'll just leave it there for now. I find this looks uh, much better. Floaters can be saved for reuse so you do not have to recreate them each time. I'll show you how. To save a floater we go to the float, floater menu and click save floater and then you would just give it a description and a name and save it. I've already saved this one so I would go to floater, load floater, Oh, I've already got one active, sorry. And then you would just choose the floater that you want to use. There's the one that I've previously saved and you can preview it and there it is. And then you can reset the uh, opacity as I showed you before. Now this is not limited to stamps. It can be, you know, it can be used on any image. So for example, I have a coin image here, and if I want to load that floater on it, I just go to floater, load floater, I'm going to preview it, click OK, and there it is available for me to do whatever I need to do with it. Let me uh, clear some of this up so that I can show you now one of the most powerful features of e Easy Image, namely file conversion and image browsing. So let's undo this. Let's begin by watermarking multiple images with text and then with, uh, with an image. I have a folder already prepared with a dozen or so images that we have been working with. I'll use the image browser tool in Easy Image to show you. I'll leave it to you for now to explore how to use this very powerful feature which allows you to view, rename, and move images amongst other things. It's literally a huge program in itself and we may do a video on it and its capabilities in the future. It can be accessed from the browse menu and then select preview browser and here is the folder that I was talking about with a dozen or so images in it. Remember that you should keep the original images separate from the watermarked images as there's no way to go back unless you have the originals in a separate folder. In my case I have a folder called hold one which is where we are right now uh, that holds the originals and we'll place the watermarked images into a hold to folder which is currently empty so there's nothing in there right now. To begin the process of watermarking all the images in the hold one folder we will use the tools menu and then go to file conversion. So we'll go to tools, file conversion and you'll see this window appear. Pay special attention to the source and target references uh, shown here. So the source reference that I have is the hold one folder and the target uh, reference is hold two. They represent the source path of the images and the target, i.e. where you want a, uh, the processed images to be saved. The, the path names field should be set to collapse into target folder as I have right here. And you can read up on this uh, on the setting by the manual or hitting F1 for help. So if you hit F1 on your keyboard, you'll get this uh, help window come up. 
and then you can just read it and see what everything does. So let's get this out of the way. I'll first do a text overlay. So we'll click on overlay. So if you click on the overlay button here, this window will come up. You're going to choose your overlay type and we're going to say text and then we're going to click on the text. I'm going to go to prior because this is what I've used in the past. I'm going to anti-alias my text and I'm going to click OK. I'm going to set the position to the middle of the image and I'm going to set the opacity to 30 for now. I normally would use something much lower but uh, just for demonstrations and purposes so we can see it I'm going to leave it at 30 and then click OK. Before you, get, you begin I always suggest that you make sure that your source and target paths are set properly and once you're ready you click on convert and then begin and when it's done we'll review it. I'm going to use our browser to uh, view the results. So here is the original images and here are the images that we've watermarked. So you can see right here we've ha actually watermarked each of the images. I'm going to delete them now so that uh, uh, they won't interfere with our next one. So I'm just going to select them all, delete them, and then close this, and I'll show you the next step. Now let's repeat with an image overlay. We'll go to Tools, File Conversion, and we'll leave everything as it was. We're going to click Overlay again. This time we're going to click on the Overlay Type and click Image and now click on image and then we're going to click on images to select I'm going to choose an image from an area that I've saved now we can preview the image the image I selected has a white background we can have the white made transparent by selecting the upper left pixel and all the white will now be transparent so I'm going to select upper left pixel and click OK and then click OK again and convert and begin. All done. Here are all the results. So go back to the image browser and as you can see there's our soft pro logo superimposed on the images. So as I said, this is a very powerful way of watermarking thousands upon thousands of images. I'll now delete all these images out of the hold too, so again, they don't interfere. And now I'll repeat the process and I'll show you what happens if you don't uh, make that white transparent. So I'll repeat the process again. We're gonna go to Tools, File Conversion, I'm going to go back to overlay, image, and this time I'm going to set the transparency to none. Everything else will stay the same. And do a convert. And now when we look at the results, see how we have that whitish background which I particularly don't like. I prefer the, clean, uh, the cleaner look with transparent edges. Either one is okay, it just depends on how you want it to look. Let's clean these up again. Now let's repeat the same process using floaters. In part one of the advanced features videos, I showed you how to create and save floaters, so I'll not uh, review that here. So I'm just going to use a floater to watermark my images. So we're going to go to Tools, File Conversion, Overlay, and this time we're going to select Image again, and we're going to select a floater, and this time I'll use the Soft Pro. Um, 
uh, logo and I'm going to do it uh, with the transparency and then we'll take a look at the results so you can see that that floater has been put on each of the images let's clean them up again Now let's do one final example. And this is how we watermark thousands of images at once for use in EasyStamp. Here I have about 50 images in a folder called Hole 3 from Sierra Leone. And these are about to go into one of our updates for, uh, for EasyStamp. So I'm going to watermark all these images all at once. So we'll do our tools file conversion. This time I'm going to set the source reference to hold 3 which is where those images were. The target will still be in hold 2. I'm going to do an overlay. This time I'm going to do a text overlay as that's what we normally use an easy stamp. I'm going to set it to anti-aliased. I'm going to put it in the center of the image and I'm going to leave it at 30 percent so that you can see the results. I'll redo these uh, later for our own use. So we're going to click OK and we're going to do a convert. Again, check my source is hold 3. My target is that temp area that I don't really care about and I'm going to do the conversion. So there was 50 images in there. We're going to let it process and then I'll show you the results. So here they are. These are the original images. No watermark. And here are each of the images. As you can see, they have a watermark in there. I hope you practice using these powerful features that we've demonstrated for you. It will save you countless of hours when processing your images, whether you're selling on eBay or Hipstamp or whatever site you use, or just uploading images to your own, uh, own uh, website for sale. Enjoy.